When the heart speaks, however simple the words, its language is always acceptable to those who have hearts. From Miscellaneous Writings by Mary Baker Eddy. Hello and welcome to Heart to Heart with Christian Science. My name is Mary Hart and I'm so glad that you could join me. I'm going to be reading from this book, The Healer, by David L. Keaston. The healing work of Mary Baker Eddy, the discoverer, founder, and leader of Christian science. One of Mrs. Eddy's early recollections regarding the healing work was interesting. We are all learning together, and I must tell you of some of the funny things I used to do when I first saw that I had this wonderful power. My family and the friends around me saw what was done and knew that if they sent for me they would be well, but I could not make them acknowledge it. I could not make them admit what had done the healing work. One day I said, Oh, I must make them acknowledge it. I must make them see that God does this. Sometimes as soon as they sent for me, they would be healed before I could get there, and they would not know that it was God who had done it. So one day when I was called to see a child, I was so anxious to have the power of truth acknowledged that I said to myself, he must not get well until I get there. Of course, that was not right, for I knew I must leave it all to God, but pride had come in, and I lost my humility, and the patient was not healed. Then I saw my rebuke, and when I reached home, I threw myself on the floor, put my head in my hands, and prayed that I might not be for one moment touched with the thought that I was anything or did anything. I realized that this was God's work, and I reflected Him. Then the child was healed. Another version of this account is as follows from Doris Greco's wonderful biography of Mrs. Eddy. Her healings were so immediate that often God was not acknowledged as the healer. She told them on one of those early occasions she had asked that the patient not be healed until she got there, that God might get the glory and Christian science be acknowledged. But when she got there, she couldn't do a thing. I couldn't do a thing. I went home and put my face upon the carpet, and there I stayed until I found Jacob's ladder from the bottom to the top. Then I saw that God in his own time and way would take unto himself the glory, and it was not for me to say. The patient was healed, and there was not a dry eye in the hall when she finished her story. Mrs. Eddy was called to treat a young girl in Lynn who the doctor said had only a little piece of lung left and was dying. There were spiritualists around and Mrs. Eddy could not reach her thought at first. So she said to her, Get up out of that bed and pull the pillow from under the girl's head. Then she called to those in the other room to bring her clothes. The girl got up and she was well. She never even coughed again. But the mother was offended at Mrs. Eddy and would not speak to her afterwards because she said Mrs. Eddy 
had spoken disrespectfully to her dying daughter. Mrs. Eddy later said of this incident, I speak sharply sometimes, but the thought must move. Another of Mrs. Eddy's students told me that one time a mother brought her dead baby to Mrs. Eddy and placed it on her lap. Our leader asked her to come back in an hour and began to treat the child. She realized that infinite love was infinite life, and infinite life was infinite love and was ever-present and kept on realizing this more clearly. After a while, she felt something moving on her lap. She had forgotten the baby. She looked down and saw the child smiling at her and kicking its feet. And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child. And the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. Mrs. Eddy was called to treat a child and when she arrived and saw the child and its mother, she paid no attention to the disease, a serious disfigurement which the child was showing but turned to the mother and said, You fell before this child was born. The mother answered, No, Mrs. Eddy, I never fell when I was carrying the child. But Mrs. Eddy declared, There is no effect from prenatal shock or fear. And the child was immediately healed of a condition very remote, seemingly, from any effect from a fall. Then the mother said, Yes, I do remember that a few days before this child was born, I fell down two steps, but I had forgotten from science and health. The relations of God and man, divine principle and idea, are indestructible in science. And science knows no lapse from, nor return to harmony, but holds the divine order or spiritual law in which God and all that he creates are perfect and eternal, to have remained unchanged in its eternal history.